What's up, YouTube? I'm going to name this issue going on in my bed because these words are hard to remember. Pythium aphanidermatum or sclerodium rolfsi. It's the same thing. And they both represent something called southern blight or belly rot. And if you look it up, you'll, you'll, you'll realize what I'm talking about. So this is southern blight. I have yellow leaves going on here. Not everything is like that. I mean, it, it, it is due to me not watering as much as I should have due to me trying to perfect this mini forest canopy method. But obviously that may have caused an issue. Now you see here, I have a lot of green growth. So I have some good, beautiful leaves. But in certain areas, you'll notice little stuff like this. And I don't want any, I don't want any leaves like that. Now here I had a, watermelon sitting right here that I harvested so that's no issue but then we can see right here so Pythium aphanidermatium sclerodium rossi southern blight or in terms we can all understand belly rot now this is a good watermelon so I, it doesn't make sense showing that one I'll get straight to the melon that has it there's another leaf of blight a little more blight size jubilee now this is the this is the this is the accused melon if you can see here this is where the, the melon was actually resting on the ground and i just want you to take note this is the only melon that's sitting on direct soil everything else is actually it has grass under it i i, I should have i should have put a, a big patch of grass under here and oh man it just makes you want to tear up looking at this guy let's, let's look at the size of this melon first come on man you can't do this to me. All right, guys. Now let's check them out. It's terrible, guys. It's about the size of my size of my palm almost. So, I mean, most people would say, you know, toss the melon. I mean, this is a this is one of the biggest jubilees in my patch, so push come to shove if I can't eat anything from it I'm gonna have seeds from it and I, I just know to not let any melon grow on direct soil all my other melons don't have this issue because they didn't grow on direct soil and this Pythium aphanidermatum is a soil bond disease now this isn't it but this came from here is it's just from having a melon actually just resting on the soil and you can see this indentation in here. So this soil was really pushing into this heavy melon. Ooh, this melon is heavy. It may be the heaviest one. And it's not the heaviest in my patch at the moment. But it's like the second heaviest, I'll say. And this one, it's a newly formed melon, guys. This melon is no more than two weeks old. Just look at the size of this. It's a big melon. So that's the issue I just wanted to discuss today. And... I'm not gonna say it's from lack of watering, but if I would've watered it a little more, there wouldn't be too much of this issue in my bed. Now, I, I don't have uh, I don't have any other melons displaying this characteristic. I did have one other Jubilee display this characteristic, and I, I began putting uh, grass under it, but I, I obviously just got too comfortable with with the uh, with the good growth that was going on, and I and I I, I began lacking. It's, it's no more than just me lacking on on keeping watch of, of all these melons guys now there are melons that i just can't roll like this one here i just cannot roll this one this is a huge melon there's no way i'll be able to roll this to get his dirt there's <laughs> just no way <laughs> but this charleston gray has no issue because let me show y'all my whole bed is it has grass on it you, you know when I was promoting the mini forest canopy method, I was also talking about bioorganic mulching, meaning I have grass in this whole garden bed. Now, these vines spread, so it, it, there was just not much I can do. The garden bed is way over here. Where this melon is, that's where the garden bed is. So, let's see right here. The bricks, the bricks end right here. The bricks are the borderline for my garden bed. They end right here, and this melon is way over here. There's not much I can do about it, guys. But, I mean, I'm gonna let this melon grow. I'm gonna let those seeds mature. And I'm just gonna have to start over again with that one. But 
I mean, it's not too much of a loss for me because I have another large Jubilee over here. And I was thinking about pulling this one off, but as I said, I want to get seeds from that one because it, it may it may, uh, it may may surpass this Jubilee in size. It, it already surpassed it in length, so I wouldn't be surprised if it, if it surpasses it in girth because this Jubilee isn't expanding anymore. It's, been, it's, it's reached its mature size a while ago. This Jubilee has not reached its mature size. It's expanding every day, guys. Um, so I also want to discuss prevention methods. So as I mentioned already, by organic mulching. Uh, it's just grass all in my bed. So just basically having grass under your melons, that's one method. Another method would be this Jubilee here. I have it sitting on the bricks because I, it was just too big to put inside the bed. It messed all the, it crushed all the vines. Make some more for me. And I, I just want y'all to look at this too. This is Southern Black. These are my vines. This was, this was watermelon vines, guys. Look at that. It's not supposed to be like that. And that's the Southern Blight. I should have kept the watering up because the sun does. I, I mean, I, I, I bragged about it many times. The sun shines right above my bed. I didn't brag about it, but I, you know, I'm, I'm highly fond of it. The, the sun shines right above my bed. It passes right over my garden bed, guys. I mean, directly over it. Here I had, I pulled the vine off right here because it was dying out. This was also um, expressing signs of southern blight. I didn't know what it was. I thought it was just from lack of watering, but it's, just, it's an actual issue that goes on with many crops. Southern blight. So I'll roll this jubilee over. Sorry about that, guys. See here, this jubilee has no issues under it. And that's just only because it's in this bed on, on bricks and grass. So we have a perfect bottom here, guys. I mean, it's, it's moist, so I can, oh yeah, so it, by it being moist, so I, I can imagine, I can imagine the issues that go on on regular soil, because this is wood chip and, uh, wood chip and grass, so. I can imagine the regular soil that it, it would actually birth disease or fungus that can cause that that rotting. And what they what they call it, they, what they say it is, is a white fungus. And if we look in here, if you read a description of it online, it says a white fungus. And if you look in here, that is a white fungus. All right, guys. So Pythium aphanidermatum or southern black guys. Prevention methods, resting melons on grass, resting melons on bricks, resting melons on anything that's uh, on a, a higher surface than actual soil. I'll, I'll say the, 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 the main, the, 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 move, the, most, the most secure method of having melon growth without rotting, just, just have them raised period guys. Have them raised on something. Now this is a raised bed here, so just have them raised on something and do not have them on soil by any means. Now this melon here is outside the bed also, but it's on grass. So I'll roll this one over. And as you can see, no Pythium aphanidra made them. I'm loving that word. <laughs> well, I'm loving how I can see it. I'm not loving it at all. I'm just loving how I can the word now if you look under this melon we have dead grass i didn't add grass here this is just the grass that was already here the vines started spreading outside of the bricks as i said and it's over here as long as you have grass under it you have no issues i promise you I, I, i've been picking jubilees guys as long as you have grass there's no issues so if you're having if you're having belly rot issues on your melons trust me it's, this is a separate issue from blossom and rot which occurs Can I see the which occurs on the well, it's hard to see the blossoming of this melon, but it basically occurs from the flower end of the melon, guys. I'll, sh I'll show it on this Charleston Gray. So, this Charleston Gray right here, blossom and rot will basically occur right here, and it'll be a blackening, it'll be a blackening and a rotting of this whole end of the opposite side where the stem is. That's not the case with this. Belly rot occurs 
actually occurs under the melon, guys. And as you can see, this is a patch of dirt right here. There's no grass there. So this was always like this right here. Like I said, if I would have had grass right under there, I wouldn't have had this issue, guys. Now, once this melon ripens, I may be able just to cut off half of it and still save that portion and be able to eat. But for the most part, I'm not even concerned about eating from this melon anymore. I just want the seeds from it just because it's one of the largest in the patch and I need to receive it, guys for next year. So that's my update, guys. Pythium after neither made them. Southern blight. Prevention methods. I do not want to see anybody else's garden with this, guys. I wouldn't wish this on anybody. Thank you.